and I would now like to talk about maximally stable extremal regions. Another simple and very powerful idea uh, that was published by Jerry Matash and colleagues in uh, I think 2002, which builds on the component tree. So let me start by the application. These authors were interested in, in the following problem in wide baseline stereo, where you have two images um, that can be taken from very different perspectives. So here on the top you see two extreme examples where one view is also strongly rotated with respect to the other. But normally you would just have large or wide baseline stereo means you have one camera much on the left hand side and the other camera much on the right hand side. The advantage of having such a wide baseline is that it allows you to well, get a better estimate of disparity and hence depth, which is the reason why some animals have their eyes at a very funny looking distance, no? so, so as to give you better ranging. And on the other hand, the further apart your sensors are, the harder it is to establish correspondence between, um, between their respective regions in those images. And shown in the top two images are the so-called epipolar lines, meaning the top yellow line on the left image maps to the, well, upper left yellow line in the right-hand image. So you can, if you, if you correct for all of the uh, camera position, rotation, and so on. So... Um, after all this rectification, you only have to search for the pixels from for the pixels from this yellow line here. You only need to search for their correspondences along that other yellow line. This is what these epipolar lines uh, are about. Okay, and now shown on the bottom are a few excerpts where maximally stable extremal regions have helped to find uh, areas in those two images. For example, this B here, which was also found in that image, and then there's you know this lower part of the B which was found in this image, or there's a total of three regions here which are also found there. So this is an interest point detector. Apart from such a detector, you also need a descriptor, which for each interest point gives you a couple of characteristics that later allow you to establish whether two interest points are the same or the different one. So, for example, you know we have all these interest points that are outlined, uh, outlined here with these white uh, contours. And if we have an inter interest point descriptor, we can ask ourselves if this interesting region on the left hand side corresponds to the first or the second or the third interesting region on the right hand side. So descriptors should be uh, on the one hand uh, distinctive and on the other hand should allow you, y you would want some invariances with respect to viewpoint, ideally with respect to illumination and others. In finding descriptors that work well in practice is a black art and a major research area and so is the finding of interest point detectors and maximally stable extremal regions are a particularly successful class of such detectors. Here's another example. So on the left hand side, uh, so, so what, what are shown here are two images of graffiti on a wall. Uh, this is, even though it looks complicated, that's actually a very, very favorable example for such interest point detectors and descriptors because the scene is flat, so you are guaranteed to have all purely affine transformations between these two images, unless you've also changed illumination uh, in between. And on the left-hand side, you see 
various uh, interest uh, or regions of interest that were that were found by interest point or interest region detectors and on the right hand side you see sketched um, the result from maximally stable extremal regions and you see this works very nicely so the pupil is found and here the cheek or whatever this is is found and so on so now that I've advertised it, it works really well how how does it work it looks at the component tree and I've tried to sketch a component tree here for an image with three local maxima so if I want to give you a different sketch of this image it would have uh, a very br if I'm trying to draw this with equicontour lines it would have a very high local maximum on the right hand side and a somewhat lower local maximum here and an even lower one there So those are the equicontour lines. Now it's essentially an image which has three bright spots or three local maxima and then becomes darker towards the rest. Now for this image I have a different representation on the left hand side. In black you see contour lines that I sketched at various gray values. So for a couple of gray values that, I, that I've tried to indicate here I've, I've shown what the uh, indi well what the contours of such an indicator image look like. By indicator image, I mean an image which is, uh, let's say, black below the threshold and white above the threshold. And I can now look at all these connected components that I extracted at all of these different levels and I can connect these connected components, extract the difference levels into a tree where uh, I simply go by spatial overlap. So if this connected component here is a true subset of that connected component and we have a nestedness or a, a true hierarchical uh, structure here, then I connect the two via a branch in this tree. And if this is a subset of that component, then I connect the two via the branch in the tree and so on. So the component tree I had here drawn in red. Okay, here was the component tree. And you see that it branches whenever a connected component breaks into two disjoint sub uh, objects. So here I have a split point because uh, this breaks into a left and into a right part and here this one breaks into this part, into that part, and so on. So this is what a component tree is and the rule for finding <coughs> maximally stable extremal regions is very simple, namely uh, it is now possible to look at the sizes of these connected components. So these sizes are in this paper called so the, the magnitude, how many pixels large this connected component here is, would be uh, R and then uh, the superscript is meant to show the gray value index and the subscript is just meant to index which component are we talking about. And what the MSER does is that it now looks at these sizes within a component tree and asks how these sizes develop. So for example, this uh, value psi here, this tree stability value psi, let's say I'm interested in the psi of this component here, then what I do according to this formula 4 is that I'm taking the magnitude of the connected component below, which is larger, minus the magnitude of the connected component above, so magnitude of the one below minus the one above, and then I normalize by the, si by the size of the connected component that I'm currently looking at. So I obtain this value psi for each node in my component tree, and then I'm, I simply look for local, uh, what is it, minima, maxima, uh, 
maxima, I'm looking for local maxima of this stability in the direction of gray values along the component tree. And these are my maximally stable extremal regions. And then if you like, you can do some pruning, you know, by size or, or so. So, super simple and super successful. Uh, I have a couple more images here, and then I will come back to your question. Um, so here is a perhaps prettier sketch of what such a component tree looks like. So let's start here. Uh, on the top left is the raw input image. And this image can now be thresholded at different gray values. So for example, almost all of the image is brighter than a gray value of 75. Almost all except for this tiny area here, which is in the darkest part of the image. Uh, only some part of the image is brighter than a gray value of 105. Namely, essentially the letters plus uh, this region here, you know, plus that. Uh, an even smaller part of the image is larger than 135 gray values without the letters and so on. Yeah, so these images that I'm uh, that are shown here and so on on to what I try to sketch here by these thresholding operations at various gray values. And in a component tree as shown on the bottom right. So you can verify that each component is always and eventually when I go to an extreme threshold, so if I go to the threshold g equals zero, I will just have a single component in compass. If there is not a single pixel that is has a value of 255, then at level of g equals 255, I will not find stability so let's say the stability of this component here, according to the formula, is found as follows. We divide, oh, excuse me, this is the magic ink which disappears. So C1, and these are the numbers that I entered. This would be the stability psi of Uh, in my tree and maxima of this stability are selected in such a component tree is of course associated with a component or here by yellowish outlines in these 